Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is big game biologist Bill Jensen. Uh, Bill, today we're going to talk about the deer rut. What exactly is the deer rut? Well, the rut is a behavioral uh, period where the males or bucks become more active uh, in preparation for the mating season. But why this time of year? Well, actually, the, the timing of the rut is triggered by two things that people don't often think about. Uh, one is when the green-up is in the spring for when the fawn hits the ground. And the second uh, factor is the length of the gestation period for the development of the fawn. What triggers the rut, Bill? Well, to get a fixed uh, signal from the environment, uh, so that the fawn is born at the right time in the spring, the over uh, eons, deer have evolved to increase their testosterone production based upon photo period, the shortening of days. And uh, of course that changes as you go farther north, but essentially th uh, that uh, triggering of shorter days uh, causes uh, chemical changes in the brain, which in turn cause the production of testosterone. When is the peak of the rut? Is it different for whitetail and mule deer? Uh, it is. Uh, f based upon uh, captive animals that we've looked at in, from zoos in North Dakota, the peak of the rut for uh, whitetails is around the 6th of November and the peak of the rut for mule deer is around the 18th of November. And uh, over 70% of does get pregnant uh, within a two week time period there. Okay, what are some of the characteristics of, of these bucks in rut? Well, uh, they're going to have to uh, fight off other males. One, they need hard antlers have a uh, buildup of testosterone, which uh, like all bodybuilders, uh, they, they, their musculature gets much bigger, their neck swells uh, to aid in, in fighting and off uh, other bucks. They are uh, urinating on themselves, so there's a musk smell involved. They don't, they don't wallow like elk, but uh, you know, there's a definite uh, scent to them during the rut. Sometimes the other thing you see is, is they're smelling and then they're licking their lips. What, what's that okay. behavior? Okay, that's called felmanine, uh, or a felmin, where they curl their upper lip. And what they're doing is they're trying to uh, open up their sinuses to smell the uh, pheromones from the doe to see if she's in heat and uh, would be receptive. Is it fair to say, like, when the bucks are riding, they kind of drop their guard? Well, uh, y yes. They, the only thing on their mind is, is to breed. And th th they're solely focused on segregating a, a doe and uh, uh, covering her to, to uh, breed her. Because if, if they don't produce young, they might as well not have existed. Is this the reason uh, the Game and Fish Department has the deer gun season in November? Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, people will have a higher success during the rut. Uh, we also uh, structured around tradition uh, that this is typically when we've always had this hunting season. Uh, and we schedule it for the uh, Friday before Veterans Day. Bill, are there any common misconceptions that people have about the rut? Some people I've heard you know, think that it's all triggered by uh, lunar phases. And it is true that deer might be more active uh, during a full moon because they can, later on in the evening, because they can see more and move around more easily. But it's, it's really the photo period that's driving the uh, rut itself. And uh, it, it, it might have some uh, limited uh, effect on the activity, but I don't think it's appreciable. 
What are the big differences between the whitetail and mule deer during rut? Any any big differences? Not really. They're they're both um, focus on one female at a time. Uh, w one thing that is I find sort of interesting uh, is that uh, does t tend to stay in matriarchal groups of, of grandmother, mother, daughter, and uh, the larger that group is, uh, you tend to have larger bucks following uh, those larger doe groups, uh, and those uh, does, uh, because of the pheromones that are circulating, uh, tend to synchronize their estrus cycle too. Uh, so it's almost like uh, a mini harem uh, uh, going on, like, like you see an elk, but it's not as pronounced. Okay. Uh, one last thing, Bill. Uh, let's talk about the deer uh, vehicle collisions. Obviously, deer are moving when, they're, when the bucks are in rut. They are, you know, and I, th I think there are a number of uh, factors coming into play. Uh, the peak, 40% of the deer vehicle accidents occur from like the 25th of October to the first week in December. And, uh, you know, part of that is driven by, you know, bucks moving does around. Part of it is that some of these family groups are breaking up. The, the male fawns from the previous years are, are dispersing away. Uh, crops are coming off the field. There's hunters in the field. Uh, all those factors, I think, come into play and, and increase the odds of deer vehicle collisions. Thanks for joining me today, Bill. You're welcome. Now is the time to locate your deer license and check it for accuracy. Every year, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department's licensing section receives last-minute inquiries from hunters who can't find their license. When that happens, it's difficult to try to get a replacement license in time for the season opener. Another reason to check the license now is to make sure that unit and species is what was intended. Deer hunters in need of a replacement license can print out a duplicate replacement license application from the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov or can request an application by calling 701-328-6300. The form must be completely filled out and notarized and sent back to the department with a fee. For big game biologist Bill Jensen and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.